I'm Caleb Harris. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be talking about table saws and how you can get away without having one in your shop. Here's a list of time codes of everything I'll be talking about so you can jump ahead if you want to. First, I want to take a minute to talk about just the table saw and how it works because I assume if you're watching this, you're probably early in the beginning stages of your woodworking journey. So I don't want to assume you have knowledge that you don't have yet. So a table saw is exactly what it sounds. It's a table with a big saw in the middle of it. That's it. Now the reason table saw is a staple of the shop is because it performs some of the most basic tasks a woodworker has to accomplish very well with accuracy and repeatability. And the repeatability comes from having a good fence. The accuracy comes from it being a machine, something you bring your stock to that is heavy and stable and takes out a lot of the user error and wobble that happens with hand tools or power tools. A table saw is different from other machines in the sense that it is not a machine made to freehand your work. You should never be taking a piece and then just freehanding it through the blade. You're always going to use some type of stabilizing reference surface like your fence. So when you're cutting, you'd be running your piece flat along your fence or using some type of miter gauge or crosscut sled that rides in the miter slots with your piece secured against it to keep it stable. Now this isn't meant to be a safety video, so I'm not going to get into all the ins and outs of why that's important. Just know that the main reason is to prevent kickback, which is when something contacts the rear of the blade and causes whatever you're working on to fly towards you. That becomes a big problem if your hands are somewhere they shouldn't be, like between the blade and the fence, or forward of the blade where you don't want it because then when that object comes backwards, it's easy to pull your hand into the blade. Modern table saws have riving knives and splitters to help to minimize that. We also have saw stop now, which you know will stop the blade and put it beneath the table. I don't have one of those, but you should, if you are using a table saw, never freehand anything. Now I'm gonna talk about the types of cuts you make on a table saw and is normally consistent with you know the width thickness and length of the board, but we refer to them based on the grain direction. The first cut I'm gonna talk about will be a cross cut, which is where you'd use some type of miter sled. And a cross cut is when you're just simply cutting across the grain, hence cross cut. The rip cut going long ways is where the table saw shines. And that's simply where you're cutting along the grain. And to a limited degree on a table saw, you can also do resawing, which is when you're cutting along the grain of the board but across the narrowest dimension. So you're taking one board and making two thinner boards. And resawing on a table saw is limited because the blade only comes up so high, normally about three, three and a half inches. So you're limited to being able to resaw twice that, cutting one way, flipping your board, and then cutting the other way. So you can normally only resaw up to about seven inches on a table saw. And the cross cut, rips cut, and resaw are pretty much the three cuts you make on a dimensional piece of wood to make it smaller. Table saws are also really good at handling sheet goods. And if you're handling full-size sheet goods, they make sliding table saws made just for that. Um, you should really break down full-size sheets before you take them to a table saw just for safety. That's too unwieldy. In your sheet goods, the grain is changed 90 degrees with every layer, so there isn't really a grain direction to follow. However, we still normally refer to cutting sheet goods as cross cuts or rip cuts based on if you're cutting across the narrow width or the long length. Making dimensional boards or sheet goods smaller is sort of the bread and butter of table saw, but there are some slightly more advanced things you can do with a dado set. You can actually do this with any blade, but a dado set makes it a lot faster. And that's cutting dados, grooves, and rabbits. And all a dado set is, is a bunch of blades that you can stack up to be a certain width. So instead of making a 3 32nd cut, if you have a thin curved blade, or an eighth inch cut, if you have a full curved blade, you can go everywhere from an eighth of an inch up to three quarters of an inch or wider and almost anything in between just depending on what blades and shims are included in the specific set you have. And the dado set is meant to get dados, grooves, rabbits, and half laps joinery like that where you're only cutting partial depth into your stock. So they're made for non-through cuts. And just like cross cuts, rip cuts, and resaw, dados, grooves, and rabbits, refer to the cut in relationship to the grain of the wood. So if you're cutting directly across the grain, that's a dado cut. If you're cutting along the edge or perimeter of a board, then that's a rabbit. And if you're cutting with the grain along the length, but not on an edge, that's a groove. And that's far from everything you can do on a table saw, but 
covers about 90% of the tasks you're gonna do on a table saw. Once you start making jigs, you can get into making coves and tapers and jointing and all kinds of other really interesting stuff on a table saw, but I really just wanna cover the fundamentals in this video. As I talk about the substitutions for the table saw, I'm not going to demonstrate all of them, just kinda of show you how they would work, because I don't think a demonstration is necessary, and this video would be an hour if I did. Now, where necessary, what I will do is refer to other videos that go more in depth to the technique. So in the description below, I'll have links to any videos that I reference or go deeper into a technique if that's necessary. Now, right here is everything you need to do everything a table saw can do. And honestly, you could even throw the jigsaw away because whatever you do on a table saw, you can do with a jigsaw. You could also do with a circular saw. And when it comes to the slots, dados, and rabbits, you can use a router. The only exception to that statement would be resawing. None of these are really good at resawing and I wouldn't recommend it. That's where the bandsaw sings, as well as cutting curves, but that's a different video. Now let's start talking about those different types of cuts. Here's a two by four I was showing over on the table saw. Now the first cut we talked about was the cross cut. I see that'd be really easy to do with the jigsaw or the circular saw, you just cut across it. One of the nice things about using the table saw with a cross cut sled or a miter gauge is you can get really square cuts. But if you have a framing square, you can just hold your framing square against it and use your framing square as a guide for the shoe on your jigsaw or miter saw to get a perfectly square cut. Next is the rip cut, that long cut with the grain of the board. Now, depending on how wide your board is, the circular saw might be a good option. The problem is the circular saw has a fairly wide base. Now, if you have multiple boards the same thickness, you can set them beside each other to provide a stable platform to set your circular saw on. However, a jigsaw it can sometimes be a lot, slightly better option for making that long cut because it has the narrower base. The problem is a jigsaw is more likely to wander and not give you a perfectly straight cut. So if you need a really flat edge, the jigsaw is not going to be your best option unless you have a sander or some hand planes to come back afterwards and smooth that cut down with. Now the last cut we talked about on dimensional lumber on the table saw was resawing, which is cutting along the grain in the narrowest dimension. I don't recommend doing that with any of these really unless you have a pretty fat board just because there's not enough reference surface for any of these power tools to safely ride along and give you a good cut. That's really what the band saw is for. You could try it with a reciprocating saw, but again, you're just gonna have a horrible cut because a reciprocating saw is made more for demolition work, not for accuracy. If you can't or you're not going to invest in a table saw or a band saw and you need to do some resawing, then just go spend 10 or $15 and get a handsaw and do it with that. If it's gonna be longer, then I'll link below to frame saws, which are made for resawing and do it much more efficiently and last a lot longer than something like this is going to. All right, now on to joinery cuts, specifically the dado, groove, and rabbit. Now, a dado is fairly easy to do with a circular saw, depending on the width. The wider you get, the easier. Because let's say we just need to remove this material to about half, half depth. We just set the depth on the circular saw to the depth we want and then take multiple passes and knock out the waste. Now you could try to freehand that, but if you're using a framing square or if the board's long enough, some type of guide for your saw, even better. Same thing for the rabbit, which is that wide cut that goes along the whole length of the board on an edge. Now, I recommend for the first cut that's going to be the shoulder of your rabbit to make with some type of guide. I have the True Track saw guide. You can get other saw guides and you can even make them. And I'll have a link below that shows you how you can make them. And once you make your first cut, you just make multiple cuts until it's all gone or most of it's gone. Then you knock or chisel out the waste. And a groove, which is basically a rabbit, except it goes down in the middle of the board and has material on both sides. You do exactly the same as you would a rabbit. Again, for whatever are gonna be the shoulders, I'd recommend using some type of guide, and then you cut out the rest the best you can and then clean it up with some type of plane or chisel. But if you want a little bit more accuracy with those dados, grooves, or rabbits, I'd recommend trying to do them with a router instead. This is one of the things a router is really made for. I don't have the specific bits for this because I have a table saw and a dado blade, but you can get bits to do all those things. And it's really easy. Most routers have a flat edge somewhere on their base. So you just set up some type of guide and then that flat edge of your router can follow the guide and then you can make dados. You can get bits that have bearings that follow the edge to make rabbits. And then the same type of bit you'd use to make a dado, you can use to make a groove along down the middle of a board. It's too easy. 
Now, if you can't get a router bit exactly the size you need for your dado groove or rabbit, then you get a smaller bit and take multiple passes until the cut is the width you need. And if you're going very deep, I also recommend not making all the cuts in one pass. You're going to bog down your router. So you want to sneak up on your depth with multiple passes. Now sheet goods. This is pretty obvious and you can do this with a jigsaw or a circular saw. If you're going to make a very long cut, I really make, recommend some type of guide because that's where you start getting up to the precision that a table saw can give you. If you're just cutting it freehand, you're going to end up with a wavy line. And the nice thing about the table saw is having that nice crisp line. So if you want to get those nice crisp lines without a table saw, then get some type of guide system. This is the True Track guide and I'll leave a link below to it. And I have this three footish section and a five foot section. So I can actually put those together to be over eight feet so I can rip full sheets of plywood or also use smaller sections to do cross cuts on plywood. Of course, if all you have is a jigsaw, you can always freehand them with a jigsaw or you use some type of level or any straight edge to be a reference for the shoe on your jigsaw. So that way you have, so that way you can make a straight cut. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. This is just one part of a series I'm doing on machine substitutions. I already did a joint a video on the jointer and I plan on doing one on the planer that's gonna be pretty short, the bandsaw, maybe the miter station and drill press. If there's anything particular you'd like to see, please leave me a comment. And also if I left out a technique that you like to use to get around not having a table saw, if you don't have one or didn't used to have one, please let me know, I'd love to hear about it. If, and as always, if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button and share this. That actually really helps. If you want to help support me bring more content like this, you can support me over on Patreon. You can buy merchandiser plans from my website. There will be links for everything below. And you can also always use my Amazon affiliate links whenever you go on Amazon. Thank you.